Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center. I'm Sarah. And tonight we are here with our friend Susan Pasquan, a returning presenter. We're delighted to have her here with us tonight. She is the Native Language Coordinator at the Yukon Koyukuk School District, um, where she actually does a lot of online educating these years. Um, excuse me. So tonight, Susan is going to be teaching us how to make some bird ornaments, and she's also going to talk with us about their names in Danaka and tell some, uh, some traditional stories. Uh, our sponsor tonight is ANC Accounting. Thank you very much for the support that made tonight's program possible. If you are interested in learning more about these programs, staying up to date with upcoming live events, or showing your support for the programs when you enjoy them, you can do all of that at morristhompsoncenter.org slash live. So with that, I will hand it over to Susan, and I hope that you enjoy the program tonight. Don't, uh, Susan Pasquan, Suuza, the Hoon, the Naga, Hustig, it's Susie's knee. Sudishnaka, Eta Benedict Jones, Booza, Ina Eliza Jones, Booza. Um, Menil Radit or Hudzit's advanced lit. Tony Zagal Silna Aslan. Steve Pasquan Siel the Doyi. Kiel Natishna Hulan. Jason Yes Adam Haba Uza. Yukon Koykuk School District Aka Gonsnik. So, uh, Denaga Hadar Hadar Digger Air, the Hun Denaga Hadar Ochtel Erna. My name is Susan Pasquan, and I am the daughter of Benedict and Eliza Jones of Kaikuk, and we are the follow our mom's clan, Tonitzagal Silna, which means uh, the middle of the stream clan. Kind of, there's three clans, so we're middle of the stream clan. And I work for Yukon Kaikuk School District as the native language coordinator, and my husband is Steve Pasquan. We have two boys, Jason and Adam, and we live here in Fairbanks. And at Yukon Koikuk School District, um, I teach to 10 different schools uh, all over in Alaska, Alakaga, which is Alakakit, um, Hadadlikagit, which is Hughes, Zatich Dinadik Antin, which is Huslia. Minil Radzda, my hometown, Kaikuk, Nulada, Nulado, Gachda, Caltag, Klaalaga, Ruby, Binti, Minto, and Lithatanits, Rampart, and then we also teach to uh, the Madre J. Summer School at Tanana, and Tanana has two names, Nuchilawayit and Hahaha de Clacton. Uh, so, <clears throat> with the school district, we have um, two languages within our district. There's Denaga, which is in all of them except for Minto, and so that has three dialects. Upper, which is um, Tanana, Rampart, Beaver, and Stevens Village. Then Central, which is um, Alakakit all the way down to Kaikuk, going back up the river to Galena, to Ruby, and then to Tanana, and then the lower dialect, which is Caltag and Nolato. Um, in our schools, we have anywhere from about 17 to about 80 students. District-wide, we have about 300 students, and we um, have had languages taught in our schools by elders uh, way back in the 70s. And so uh, some people uh, remember those classes with those elders, and they did a lot of um, stories and conversation and then made a lot of traditional crafts. So this was a real busy time of year. And um, currently we teach both languages over video conference. I teach in half hour blocks to the students, and we provide a lot of resources to them. If you're interested in looking at some of the language material, you can go to our school district website, www.yksd.com, 
And you can also go to the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center. There's a real cool dice game on there um, under their native language corner. And uh, there's also resources out there like Doyon Languages Online through the Doyon Foundation. And on Facebook, if you're on social media, we have a Facebook group called Dinakanaga. And I put links on there, like this um, holiday season, everybody was busy learning holiday songs. And so I put links on there, um, been kind of techy, used a Bitmoji Classroom. And so we, it has a hyperlinks, which are, uh, you click on it, it'll bring you to a folder. And then in that you can select songs and there's video. Um, you can see the words and then you'll hear me listening. I mean, you'll hear me singing. I tell you, I'm not the, the best singer, but um, I can teach the words. That's what I tell my students. I said, you, you guys have the talent of singing. Anyway, so welcome tonight. I hope um, that you're looking forward to making some bird ornaments. These are going to go onto your Christmas tree. And I'll show you the three things that we're going to make. And as I'm making it, I will um, tell you some stories. So this one is, it's a haltuna. This is a black cap chickadee. So as you can see, it has the black cap. And then here's a picture. Um, Roy Corral took this picture of a Getzahaltuna at his bird feeder. I like this picture because the wings are out and the tails are out, kind of like our ornament. And then this one is Cayuda, which is a pine grosbeak. Um, this one's bigger than a woodpecker. And this one is... Um, uh, they come in, there's a male version and a female. So the male has the red coloring. That's what we'll make tonight. I really liked it for the holidays because it has a nice reddish color kind of in the theme of our holidays. So, um, and this is what the Cayuta looks like. This is what um, Saganat Marianne Sam in Huslia. She took a picture of this um, bird. It was at her bird feeder. And it must have been a cold day because you can see how rounded it is. They kind of fluff up when, it's, when it gets really cold. So to make these ornaments, um, let me put these aside for just a moment. So that's what the final one looks like. And then we're going to go step by step. The, let's start out with the, um, the pine gross beak. So this is the pattern and you can find the pattern through the Morris Thompson. Oh, yes, Sarah. I just wanted to add that if anybody who's watching has questions, they can post them in the live chat to the right of the screen and I can share those with Susan. Oh, perfect. Okay, so this is the pattern and um, you can use this on cardstock paper and I'll tell you something funny. I got a Christmas card today, and you know, we're kind of resourceful people. This is my nice Christmas card. But this is nice cardstock paper. So if you don't have cardstock paper, you can read the card and find the one that's the right size. I would do, see how pretty that is? Already has the glitter on it. Um, so you take your pattern on there and you cut your pattern out. For example, uh, let's see, where's the one? I, you cut the pattern out and you trace it. Okay, I've lost that one. You trace it on here and then you fold it on this fold line like this. And then you start cutting along the edge of the bird right here. The stomach is called bibit, and the tail is called bakat, bakat. And you kind of move the paper instead of moving the scissor. See how my scissors kind of the same, but I'm moving the paper. I think that helps keep the shape of it. Okay. 
And as you're coming down round about there, and the um, wings, let me see, the feathers are called a kudla, and I think the wings are, let me see, is it bitsina? It might be. I might have forgotten. Okay. And the head is called the clip. And this um, Cayuta pine gross beak, it has a real kind of a stout body, nice and plump and a big beak for breaking all of those seeds. They like uh, the black sunflower seeds. When I go to um, Huslia, my friend, she goes through a lot of uh, bird seeds because the birds like to go to her house. Once you have it cut out, then you can, um, if you want to, you can go with a pen and just highlight what parts of the tail looks like. We can do that on both sides. I mean, not the tail, the wing. Okay. Just kind of uh, outline it there. We can color it in later. And then we can also do the beak. Has a big, big beak there. The word Cayuta, uh, which is pine gross beak, they don't know what the origin of it is. There's some words in Danaga that um, we know the origin of the word. But this one, they're not quite certain when uh, they were writing the dictionary. Some words just have an unknown origin. But they did have this to say about it. Um, so it means it's trying to hear the sound of something again. So in the springtime, when the uh, Cayuta comes back, the, uh, it, tries, it imitates the birds that it hears. And so it copies it. And so that means it's trying to hear the sound sound of something again. So for example, it might hear the del Clidza, which is the Bohemian waxwing. So it might make that call or the del Kahu, the robin. And it might also make the call of Guzak, the great cheek uh, thrush. And if it imitates that call good, then that other bird answers. And so um, that's what might happen in the springtime when those other birds start returning. I'm just going to outline that just so you can see it a little better. Okay. And you have artistic choice with these. There aren't a right or wrong. Let's put a little on the um, top feathers, kind of identify it a little bit. Kikudla. Okay. On the, do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just using any black marker. This I had in my classroom. This is just Expo markers. Nothing fancy. Okay. And looking at this bird here, I see kind of how it's um, black and got a few little white stripes. So maybe on these ones, I'll just color these bottom ones a little bit black. Not too much. And just leave a little bit of white on the bottom there. Okay, that looks good. Let's color in, make the beak and the eye a little bit dark. They have real pretty eyes if you take a look at one close up. Hopefully they'll come to your bird feeder. I did see that um, one of the things that they have a Christmas bird count and this is one of the birds that they keep an eye out for. Cayuta, pine grosbeak. 
Okay, so now we're going to get our glitter. And I just went to um, the craft store here in Fairbanks and I just got this glue get glitter. If you don't have this glue glitter, you can use regular glue and spread it onto your uh, paper and then if you have regular glitter. Okay, this one's tricky. You gotta take the inside cap off. Get my hands all glittery. Okay. So the, uh, this glue glitter, it's kind of nice because it doesn't make as much mess as regular glitter. And it's kind of cool too because it kind of, you can put the uh, striations of the feathers on here. So you see on this one how the um, banana, the back, is red. So we'll just keep our uh, glue, red glue glitter coming down the back a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. And down here on the belly part, it turns into a little bit of gray. The word for red in Danaga is uh, us. us is it is red, and Dathlik Uzi is the red thing. Yeah, this is a real pretty, pretty red color. So we'll do that for the come down just about right about there to the bibit. And if you want to, you can, um, well, I don't really want to get my fingers all dirty. But if you want to, you could smear that a little bit. So I'll let that side sit there and I'll use my gray, which is Le ba in Denaga for gray. And I'm gonna use that on the bottom. Okay. So we'll just color that down there. And then we'll do the, um, the wings. Make those real pretty. And it'll smear your uh, the markers a little bit, but that's okay. Leave that white and then put gray down here. Oh, I forgot to highlight the tail. Let's do that. Good enough. So while uh, this side has to dry, so then we will go work on the next bird which I'll tell you about. Okay, we're gonna let that one sit for a little bit and let it dry. Okay, so that's the Cayuta. Now we're gonna work on the um, Gitzahaltuna. Gitzahaltuna is a black cap chickadee and um, it gets its name because it's kind of a, a little bit of a feisty bird. It's a Haltuna, a little bit contrary. Has a real pretty name. There's a lot of people that have that um, name. It's a Haltuna. It's a real, one of my favorite birds. Okay, so let me get that pattern. Okay, we'll cut this one out. So there's the fold line on that one. I'll fold it along there. So the pattern that uh, was sent to the Morris Thompson Vis Cultural and Visitor Center, it also has an outline of where to color the head and the, uh, the chest. So it's a Haltuna, they, they come in large flocks too and they like to visit your bird feeders. 
favorite activity. I didn't do it this year. We were concentrating on learning our holiday songs is making uh, bird ornaments. It's a nice activity you can do this time of year when you're all at home or in January. You know, this week in Fairbanks, we're supposed to be getting some colder weather, so nice time to put out the bird feeders. I used to have mine out regularly, but those uh, doves started moving into our neighborhood and they started kind of chasing away all the other birds, so I had to put it away for a while. Maybe I can put it out again. Okay, so the tail is baka. And you'll just go around and cut all of that out. There's a, a Gadon Zidni story. Gadon Zidni means um, a long time ago it was said, and it's the traditional stories that are, and I'll be coloring these, so I'm going to color this bottom part black. Um, it's the traditional stories that were told, and in those stories there, there are like legend stories. Um, and what happened during those times have a lot of um, carry over into the animal or bird characteristics today. And they also have, um, they have stories about them so you kind of learn from them. What happened then and um, if you have uh, you're worried about something, somebody might tell you a story and you kind of sit and think about it and say, hmm, what did that mean? Okay, so there's the um, bitli. So it's all black. I guess we could make it a little bit darker there. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So, oops, see this is what happened, how I ended up with red on my other one. Okay, working with wet glue. Okay, so the beak is um, bedo, and the eye is benaga. So anyway, I was saying that uh, on these Gadon Zidni stories, they um, used to be told, my mom is Eliza Jones from Kaikuk and so she used to hear stories, and I remember when we were uh, living in Kaikuk, we, had, we lived in a one-room cabin, and uh, so there was eight kids, and she used to um, tell us stories before we went to bed. That was one of the favorite things. Anyway, so there is um, a series of stories that are told, and stories are told in the... Um, midwinter to right about this time of year um, solstice is coming up and so this is the third in a book of um, uh, traditional stories that late Aunt Catherine from Huslea and this one here is called Kani, the one who paddled among the people and animals and there is a story on here it's the third story and it's called Kitsahaltun um, Denayu, the chickadee people. But if you start, this is one of the ones that are strict. If you start telling all the stories in this book, you kind of have to go through the whole thing in one week. So you can't start a story in here and start another one. So I can't tell you this story today. I'll tell you another story um, because when you, and this one is about the traveler, Get Talcani, that's what it means. He traveled. And so the stories are told in sequence. And um, mom told us that when um, her late uncle used to tell them stories, they would um, <clears throat> be sitting around or laying down before they went to bed, and he would start telling a story. And... 
um, they would listen. And to make sure that they were listening, they have to go every once in a while <clears throat> to acknowledge that they were still listening. So he would know that they didn't fall asleep. And uh, the next day, before he started telling stories, they had to tell part of the story over again. And that was how oral stories were passed down, is the um, retelling, because they used to be very strict about how they told the stories. They had to be um, told in the same same manner. And then um, she said it was, you know, like if they if they said something wrong in the story, then um, he would just gently correct her, you know, just say, um, he wouldn't say not this, he would just say the correct way and then they would remember. So the next time she told this story, and I'm going to bend this wing down here. The next time they told this story, then um, they would know that they need correction. So if you look at this picture of the Gitzahaltuna, it's kind of grayish up here on um, its head, and then it's kind of goldish down here. So we'll go ahead and uh, use our nice gray. Whew, glitter glue there. And then we'll do, oh, actually, okay. I'm going to go glitter all the way back here. Gray, I mean. So um, that was how they had learned all of the stories is by retelling it all the time. And um, mom worked with many elders. Oh, I forgot to take this off. Up at the university at the Alaska Native Language Center. So many of these stories are up there in the archives, these ones that uh, late Aunt Catherine told, and with the audio tapes. So we were very... our you know, for our language and for our people. Very fortunate that um, she had worked up there all of those years and documented all of that because uh, we can study it today. I was telling Sarah that right before um, this, it was a real busy week. And one of the things I did this semester was I challenged myself to learn um, more of the grammar and the um, aspects of our language that are in stories and in conversations. So I was busy doing that, and I did use the archives up at the Alaska Native Language Archives. Okay, so we'll let that one dry, and I'll color this a little bit. Oops, not gold. Hmm, maybe I better not. I might be running out of my silver. We'll just do it a little bit. Just a little bit here and there. It doesn't need to be perfect. Oh, I forgot to outline again. The cut. Hmm, I better leave the other side for a little bit. So um, I'm going to put these aside and let them dry. And I'll start on my second project. And I'll start telling the story of that one. OK, so move these aside. Let them dry there. So what we're going to make on this next one, this is um, a ptarmigan. And this is the story, uh, Dekin Ock which means wooden bowl. And so we're going to make a paper collage, torn paper collage it's called. This is a, an art form. So we have blue construction paper and my crayon, which is right here. OK, so we're just going to hand draw this. And there's no right or wrong if you make 
two big circles, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so to do this, we'll set our scene. We'll have the um, stomach bibbit, and that's okay. We're gonna cover up all of this yellow. Okay, so there's the stomach. And then let's make another oval up here for Bitli, its head. And then we'll connect those two. And Bido, its beak, right here. And then we'll put a triangle on the end for Baka, its tail. And the ptarmigan, they um, walk a lot in the snow. So they almost have like snowshoe legs. They have real thick legs, real stout there. Okay, so we'll, these aren't perfect, you know. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. And then we'll have a, um, it's nice to have a horizon line when you do artwork like this, any kind of artwork. It's nice to have a good horizon. And let's put a couple of, um, as the Dilbaga is walking, it leaves its tracks in the snow. So let's put a couple of tracks behind it. Tracks are called, we would say Dilbaga Gah is the um, ptarmigan tracks. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm going to get my tray of my paper plate. And my tray, my glue glued up and dried up. So I'm just going to squeeze some out here on a plate. And this works out real good if you have small children. Instead of letting them squeeze out the glue and you have a mess all over, you can just put glue on a plate and then um, put it onto the construction paper for them like that. I'll just do a little bit of a t at a time. So this next story that I'm going to tell you is called Dick Lock. And um, Dick Lock means a wooden bowl. So it starts off, all our stories start off like in the time long ago. Okay, ahead of time, I took some white construction paper and I just ripped it into little pieces and I didn't want to waste your time and have you watch me rip up a whole bunch of them. So I ripped up some, but I left some here um, so that you can be ripping some up while I'm doing this. In the time long ago, there lived a man at, um, he lived in a Nahalukana, which is a winter house. And can you go ahead and show a picture of the winter house? Steve, and I'll show you um, the winter house was an underground house. Uh, a long time ago, people lived in underground houses because they were warmer. So the um, these were like sod houses, and you access them by uh, <clears throat> from the ground, and you they had a tunnel that went down. And um, every day people had to go out hunting. You know, there wasn't much food back then. It was starvation times. And so when people um, left, they, there was no knocking their doors. This is all before contact. Before contact means before um, the explorers or the missionaries came in. So it was only native people that lived in the country. And so... This man, he, um, before he went out for the day, he went, he made nonathlada, and nonathlada is a favorite dessert. It's called fish ice cream. Nonathlada means the thing that you whip up, and it's made with, um, you take a fish, the meat of a fish, like, a, oh, well, maybe I'll come back to that one after, okay. So anyway, so this man, he made non-athlata. So when he returned home that evening, he would have that to eat. And back then they didn't have, um, you know, bowls and stuff that we had today. They, if they 
had any dishes, they had to make it themselves. So they had a, um, he had a wooden bowl called Dick Intok, and he made his nonat clara and he left it on um, the table or whatever he had there that he had his food on. And he went out. While he was gone, there were a couple of men traveling, and they came upon his nachalu, and they, um, back then, they didn't uh, knock on the door that you do the way you do today. They kind of just, you know, like how when you start to go into um, the house, you kind of stomp your feet to stomp the snow off. That's what they, that's how they announced their arrival. There wasn't knocking. They just uh, stomped their feet and that we let the homeowner know that uh, somebody's at the door. And so they did that and then they politely waited a little while and they went into the house. Um, and once they got in there, they saw that nobody was home, so they waited and they waited. Gee, they were getting hungry. But they kept waiting because it's not polite to, um, you know, to go into somebody's house and start eating. So they waited a while, but boy, they were really hungry. And they saw that non Clara on the, um, I don't know if it's on a table or a ledge or something. Anyway, so they're looking at it and waiting and waiting. And finally, one of the men said, let's just have one bite. Okay, so they went and they had one bite. And, mmm, Lenich, that was delicious. Okay, let's just have one more little bite. So then they had one more little bite. Mmm, Lenich, and it seems like they just got hungry or so. They decided, okay, one more bite. And so they had another bite. Then they had another one. And pretty soon the bowl was empty. They, oh, we ate all of his food. And so um, just then they heard, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's this somebody cleaning the foot, the snow off of their feet. And so the two men hid because they, did, they knew they did wrong by eating all this man's food. So the one man, um, he hid in the Zagati. And if you see that, um, that Nachalu, where it comes out like that, that's the tunnel. That's where they entered the house. And so that's called Zagati. And so that man had hid into that doorway and the other man had climbed up into the rafters. It's kind of like a sod home, kind of like an igloo. So he hid up there and the man came in and he um, got himself, you know, took off all his stuff from out going out hunting all day. And he looked, he looked at his wooden bowl, bakala, there was nothing in it. What happened? And so he told that bowl, that wooden bowl didn't say anything. We'll pretend this is the wooden bowl. And he said, who ate out of you? Oh, before that, the men had told him, you better not say anything. So that wooden bowl didn't say anything. And that man was getting really mad and he said, he was picked up that bowl and he said, who ate out of you? You don't tell me or I'm going to throw you down and break you. And so finally that um, the wooden bowl, he said, he said, uh, uh, let's see, what did he say? Canal in. There's a man hiding out in the um, entryway. And so the man went out to the entryway 
and he saw a man out there and so he reached over to grab him and that man was just taking off and if you want to show the picture of the mink he um, was grabbing him and as that man was taking off he was pulling him but he was slipping away and so that man um, after that he turned into the mink and if you look at the mink tail you'll see that it's real tapered it starts out real wide and it comes real narrow and so that goes back to that story of the kintok how come the mink has a tapered tail and so the <clears throat> he got away and that wooden bowl he had told the man that there was two two men and he asked him, where is that other one? And he said, Del Boga Nodaga. So in that sod house, he, that man was up there at the, um, up in the rafters. And so after the man had come home, he had made a fire in the, um, in the center of his Nahalu. And when you make a fire, you know, the smoke goes up. So he <clears throat> ended up smoking out the man that was up there. And that man turned into Delbaga. And that's what we're making right now is the Delbaga. And when we're done, I'll show you on there how the Delbaga, uh, right here, it has red right above its eye. And you can show a picture of the uh, ptarmigan there. And you can see on the ptarmigan that sure enough, it has red right above, above its eye because um, it got smoked out from the um, story of the Dick Ink Ock. So in this story, the, um, the ptarmigan has a red eye and the mink has a taper tail. So when you think about um, when you make your little delbaga here, you can now remember this story of the wooden bowl. Nice little stories like that. Um, you know, you can think about different things like the nonathlada. What is that? Nonathlada is a fish ice cream and it's made by um, using the meat of a fish that has white meat like um, pike or she fish. Pike is ulkoya and she fish is ledlaga. And it's boiled. Once it's done, um, you gut it and then you put the um, fish into the pot. And once you do that, then you let it cool off a little bit you know, just enough so that you don't burn your hands. And you take the, um, a chunk of the, um, the fish meat, you peel away the skin and the dark part, and then you take that and you squeeze it real tight and then real hard and then little, the um, water will drip out. And once you have that in your hand, then you get that and you put it over in your pan and you keep doing that till you get a whole pan full and um, after that, you'll have a whole tray of um, kinot, which is the meat. And you'll, um, every once in a while, fluff it up and it'll get air in it and it'll dry. It usually takes, usually if we make it like if we're having potlatch or something, we'll make it like the night before. Um, and then once it's nice air dried, then you can um, mix up. Uh, ha, which is Crisco, and you whip that up by hand. And when I was first learning to make uh, non athlata it was in Kaikuk, and we were having a potlatch, I think for my late great-grandma. And we were blessed to have so many um, of our aunties. Most of them are gone now, but... Uh, they were all at my mom and dad's house, and um, I said I wanted to learn how to make non asclara So they sat me down, and um, they say usually when, you, when you're learning how to make it, you sit um, in a quiet place, you know, with not too much traffic. But it was potlatch, so 
they made me turn my back to the door so I wouldn't be facing all the people coming in and out of the house all day. And um, there was, gosh sakes, there was late Aunt Angela Huntington, uh, late Laura Pitka, um, my late Auntie Alice from Hughes. All of them were there, but they were all trying to give me directions. And they said, oh, she only need one teacher. So um, I think it was, I can't remember if it was late Aunt Angel or um, late Laura, who ended up being my teacher. So she told me to um, fluff up the, the knot, the fish. And then once I, um, and once I fluffed up the grease and stuff, it kind of, you whip it up and then... You start adding in the uh, ganot, the meat, and after a while, um, it'll get thick. And you can add in if you, they used to use like moose tallow, like a fat. Um, but you can add in a little bit of milk or um, water to it. And then after that, um, once it's thick enough, and that's the, when you're learning, it's kind of, Good to have somebody there who'd say, "Okay, that that looks good now," and you um, then you can add in your berries. And my favorite is giga, which is blueberries, and cot, which is um, salmon berries. And so you can add that in, and then you add in the sahala, which is the sugar, just enough to sweeten it. Once you do that, um, then you can set it aside and let it cool. Like we were, it was summertime when we made it, so we put it in the freezer outside. Wintertime, you can just leave it outside, um, let it get a little bit frozen again. And then it's a... Um, Dessert that's used for special occasions like weddings or um, memorial or funeral potlatches or if it's somebody's birthday or anniversary, it's a real special treat. When my, um, you know, and I travel a lot and when you have young kids and you go somewhere, they, um, well, maybe we train them that way. You bring them back a present anyway. My son, he says, Mom, I told him I'm going to Kaiku. Mom, when you come back from Kaiku, can you bring back Nanathlada? And, and potlatch, we get it in a, um, a plastic cup. Plastic cup with a, um, I guess that's how he guessed thought it came. And so it had, he said, and I want it in a cup with a spoon in it. And so usually we get it in a cup and then you, you know, you just put the spoon in it, but that's how he wanted it, so I had to bring it back to Fairbanks that way, just the way he wanted it. All right, so we're almost done with our delbaga here, and so these are the delbaga gach, the um, ptarmigan tracks, and so it's kind of hard to see my snow line there, so I'm just going to add a little bit more, and you can get use your creative license there and do whatever you want on um, making a horizon line. I'm just doing this because it's harder. I didn't bring my white crayon. Forgot that. Okay, so we'll just make a horizon line. We can use white paper. And looks a little silly, but that's okay. Okay, then we're almost done with that, and then we'll add a few snowflakes. Got to have depth there. And remember, you're the artist, so uh, whatever looks good in your eye is just perfect. There's no right or wrong when you do artwork. Otherwise, we would all have artwork that looked the same, and that would not be fun. Okay, so I'm going to wing this. So a snowflake 
Let's see. We'll try to make a six-sided one. Yeah. If you have a white crayon, you can just make these out of white crayons. Oh, I could have used my gray. Could have borrowed it from my other project. My gray uh, glitter. Okay, so we're almost done with this one. But we got to add the red above the eye because that's how it got its red eye. Tell you, I'm going to go home with all kinds of glue on my fingers. Glue and glitter. I hope you all made some nice presents for your family for Christmas. I think that's one of my favorite things. Um, you know, when my boys were little and I kept every single one of their decorations from every grade and um, I hang them up every single year. It's like there's no other better decoration. So those of you that are out there making a decoration, make sure you put your name on it, especially if you have more than one child, and you put the year. So like I would put um, Jason Kindergarten, 2001, or Adam Kindergarten, 2002. Okay, so we'll make one more little snowflake. I don't know the word for snowflake. It's snowing is athiyat, but I don't know. And I know snow on the ground is tzit, but I don't know the word for an actual snowflake. You know, I have to call, um, like today I had to call my mom and to refresh my memory of this story, Dick Intlock because I had heard it before, but I hadn't heard it for a while. And so um, she reminded me that he said, who, who ate out of you? And so she told me those in Danaga. Okay, while looking snowflakes. All right, so now we're ready to add the red above the eye. Okay, so I just brought my black for Benaga, the eye there. And a red marker for right above it. That looks like a debugger. Okay, so if you want to add some Denaga Denaga phrases. When I was teaching the students this unit, um, I was also teaching them the Denaga words. And so on this one, I wrote Bedo for the beak, Betlik for its head, Benaga for the eye, Bedzaga for its chest here, Betlena for its leg, Baka for its foot, and Baka Bika for its tail. So if you want to add anything else to it, um, you can do that. So I'm going to put that aside. That finishes our story of Del Baga. And let's come back to our other ornaments up here. Hopefully they dried enough. Okay. Which one was I doing? Okay. So what we're going to do is it didn't quite dry so I'm just going to hold it like this and then but I'll show you how to finish it. So we're going to go ahead and finish uh, coloring this one and then I'll show you how to glue it together. So all right so red again is that like us. Gee I hope I don't run out of I think I might be running out. Okay there we go good enough. Hope you're all doing okay. Um, in all this crazy pandemic, all the quarantines. If, you were, so I, if there was a live audience, I would say, how many of you been in quarantine between one and five times? Five to ten times. Oh, my gosh. That's where I feel like I'm at. Quarantine, quarantine. 
I haven't traveled out to the villages uh, since November of last year. So it's been over um, a year. And I used to go to, as my job with the school district, at that time we had 10 schools. And um, my coworker, Andrea, and I, we traveled out to our 10 schools twice a year. So that was 20 trips per school year. And then sometimes we had special stuff on top of it, like flight club or graduation. So we'd make additional trips. So this has just been a strange year to not be able to go out. Haven't seen my mom probably since last November. So hopefully maybe during this um, holiday break, maybe I can sneak home. The villages have been um, real vigilant on um, uh, keeping people safe. You know, once you get home, you have to quarantine for so long, you know, just to make sure that you don't have the virus. Because you could test negative and then um, still have it. Maybe your body didn't build up enough of the viral load after you were exposed. Um, so that's why they have the long quarantine, is just to make sure that everybody's safe. And pray that this um, vaccination that they have, nobody gets too sick from it. Me, I would totally get it. Um, you know, I was helping. There's people that are lost here in Fairbanks that are missing, and I help search for um, that right before Thanksgiving, and uh, I realized afterwards that I was, you know, they say don't touch your, your face and hands and stuff, use your sanitizer all the time. What I realized happened was I had on my, um, I had on my mask and I was talking to people, asking them if they had seen uh, Willis, and my glasses were fogging up. You know how they fog up when you're wearing a mask. And I realized that I was um, clearing my glasses. And I figured that's how it got into my body. So I ended up with it. Anyway, um, so what you're going to do on this is you're going to put the glue on its head and its tail. So we'll put the glue there. And then we'll hold, oh boy, I'm really getting messy. <laughs> okay, we'll hold these two together and squeeze the tail together. Okay, let it dry there for just a second. Oh, I forgot to bend this down, okay. Okay, so that's drying, and I'm just going to decorate this top real quick. Okay, and we'll just add a little bit of glitter on there. So this time of year, you know, before the holidays, people are sharing. Um, like we're going to be, our school district is going to be implementing um, activities where we share cultural values. And in 1986 or 85, Dinakanaga, our local um, elder and youth organization, they adopted some Athabascan values that they want to um, our youth to know. So the one of the ones that we chose is sharing. And the reason people share things, um, you know, in the story of that uh, Dick Intlock, 
You know, if that man had been home, he would have shared his food because that's one of the things um, that you do is you do share the food that you have. You know, if you have extra or even if you don't have extra, if you know that somebody hasn't had that food for a long time, you, you share that with them. Um, and in this season, this Christmas season, like today, I got gifted uh, these earrings and then somebody brought me their um, cookies that they made yesterday. And mom said, when I talked to her, she said, cousin Bobby came over and gave her a bag of dry meat. And so people just share the food that they have. It not only um, shows that you care for the person that you're giving it to, but in our way, that's the way that you pass on your luck as a, um, like as a hunter. If you share the food that you catch, um, then that'll bring you luck because you're taking, you took care of that food and then you're giving it to somebody. Okay, so if this head and this tail are dry, you get um, paper towel or something and you scrunch it up and you stuff it in here to kind of plump out the body. Now mine isn't dry too good, so it's not quite holding together. And then you get, um, I got some fish twine. You can use fish twine or you can use uh, thread or if you have holiday ornaments, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but I'm gonna tie this fish twine into a knot using a fisherman's knot, I hope. Okay, so you twist that around, twist that around, twist that around, and then you, so it's twisted around like that, and then you bring this other end into that little hole. Look at my fingers all full of glitter and glue and what not, I'm trying to tie a fisherman's knot. Okay, there we go. My late brother, um, Vernon Suraila, he taught me um, how to go fishing and to tie a fisherman's knot. Anyway, so as you share things you're passing on, um, you're keeping your luck and you're also um, passing on food. In the times long ago, um, there were starvation times and it was real important to um, share the food. So if you do have um, food to share, you know, whether you're in the village or if you're here, give to the food bank or bring to um, the homeless or um, to the places that feed the homeless. It's like when I go berry picking, I have people I bring my berries too that can't go out um, berry picking. Okay, so there is your Cayuda. He needs to dry a little bit. He's pretty, pretty wet. All right, so we'll leave, leave him there and then we'll try to work on the Gitsahaltuna. And I am quite the mess. All right, so there's one side that's dry, thank goodness. And now I'm just gonna color up this other side to kind of match him a little bit. And uh, any questions over there? Okay, nice quiet audience tonight. Okay, so we'll just color this up and. I have a question. Oh, yes. I'm curious to know if the, the names for body parts that you're teaching us are only for birds? Oh, no, no, they're for, um, so this word, like um, I was saying, like bido, it's beak, you know, that part is just for birds. But then if you say bitli, that means its head. And you can, um, if you want to talk about um, his, her, or it, it has that bi prefix, but if you, um, what if I ask you, you know, does your head hurt? I could ask you, nitli abahi, ne, ne means your, and um, 
then if you want to say, yes, my head hurts, then you can say, si, sitli, aba, my head hurts. So the prefixes in uh, Athabascan languages, in Danaga, we have about 30 prefixes that um, each, pretty much each syllable has a different meaning and um, a whole sentence can be in one word. Like there's a word that we use, um, take care of yourself. And every little one of those syllables have a different meaning. Um, means uh, it's a reflexive, so you know, you take care of yourself. So that's the part that means yourself. And yini is in the mind. So ada royani galidanik means um, in your mind you um, also be careful with what you say. So like uh, my late great grandma, Julia Nelson, she used to tell us, um, think with the head. And with that she meant, you know, like when you travel and stuff, you be careful with, with what you say and what you do. You know, you're traveling and you're representing your family and your village. So you have to be um, be good while you're traveling. So yeah, every, every one of those prefixes, um, they tell you a little bit of something about. So that's what's pretty fascinating about study languages are all those little differences. There's all different ways that, you know, if you want to just study vocabulary, you can have vocabulary games like the one that's on the Morris Thompson site. Um, but there's also games that you can do to play, uh, to learn verbs. Okay, so this is still wet, but I'm going to dry it anyway. Oh, I got a, got a color here. This is a, I'm almost out of blue, so I'm squeezing it real funny because it's just about out. I guess this glue is only good for two decorations. So it might be more... Well, if you're just making two, you'll be all right. If you want to make more, you got to buy more glitter glue or go to the old glue and the glitter that gets everywhere. All right, so I'm putting the glue on the tail, if you can see that. Okay, so I'll... Hold that shut. And then put glue on Bitly, its head. And hold that shut. Okay. Scrunch up another paper towel. I have to give credit. I actually saw. Um, a different version of this on YouTube and then I just changed it to our local birds because the one that was on there didn't look like our local birds and it's like well anybody can make this you know teachers we always borrow things from each other's I was like why reinvent the wheel okay so we'll let that dry while I somehow managed to do my I should have did this when my hands weren't so terribly dirty I would say, um, my hands are dirty. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do one more fisherman's knot. Try not to keep a messy workplace. Try to keep neat and I'm just making a mess here. Hopefully you can't see my whole mess. All right, let me clean it up a little bit. That's one thing my um, I was taught when you're working is to try to keep a neat place. And so if you're sewing and stuff, you don't let your threads um, fall down onto the floor. You always have a, uh, have a cup. Like when I'm sewing at the table, I always have a cup or a bowl handy that I put my garbage in. And it's just one of the values of um, being clean when you work. See, like I'm done with these, so I'm going to throw those over there. Okay, so see if I can do another fisherman's knot here. 
I always think of my late brother when I do this um, fisherman's knot because he's the one that taught me. All right, so twist that around and twist it around maybe another time. And then I don't know if you can see it, kind of hard to see, but I'm going to put one end into that loop. Uh, real challenging with real dirty fingers. Yeah, came apart. Okay, try it again. Twist it around, twist it around. Anyway, so when you're sewing and stuff, try to be neat. And that goes to whatever work you do, you know, um, when you're sawing wood and stuff, you kind of keep all the sawdust off to the side. Just one of the, I guess, um, respect for your working tools, whether it's your sewing tools or, you know, the tools that you use to, uh, to get wood or the, um, the tools you use to go hunting or fishing, respecting it by taking care of it. And that way you're respecting the land and the animals. Ooh, this one is just a little bit more challenging. I just can't quite get that in there. Don't give up. That's another, another thing they tell you. Okay, I got it. Okay, so I'll tighten that. No, this one I didn't make as big, but that's okay. Okay. So then I will um, put this in here and put that right at the top. And, oops, I think I just took that from the other bird. <laughs> Okay, hold that for a second, and meanwhile, I'll put this one back on this one because I took this one's hanging decoration. Okay, so I'll hold that there for a little bit. And I hope that when you make your ornaments that you write your name on there somewhere and you can bring these home and hang it on your tree. Put some bird feed out for the birds so you share your food with them and learn some stories and um, there's all kinds of resources out there if you want to look up activities um, or if you want to look, look up language stuff you can google um, whatever language you're interested in learning so like the language the main language I do is Denaga. Um, you can Google that, D-E-N-A-A-K-K -A -K apostrophe E. Um, I think some of the languages are back there. Maybe it, they just say Athabascan. And uh, then you can also look up uh, Athabascan art and if you're interested, there's all kinds of resources. If you're interested in more stories like that, um, Tana Chiefs Conference has uh, done a series, the um, Elder Stories, Legends, I think they're called. Oh, Legacy of Our Elders. Um, and I think those are available on the Tana Chiefs website and on the KRFF radio. Um, for audio stories, there's the uh, jukebox, and those are Raven stories, and I think that's at jukebox.uaf.edu. And for language lessons, you can go to the YKSD website, and we have some links on there to different language lessons. Um, I have my own YouTube channel. I have some up there. And then Yukon Koikuk School District, 
Um, we have our 14th annual virtual holiday program that we just did two days ago. So uh, you can hear the kids singing in Denaga and Benti, so you can watch that. Okay, so there are our ornaments and our little artwork. And I brought along this. Um, uh, this is from Sant Guda, which is a uh, um, spruce grouse chicken. Or I think this is dich. Anyway, so I don't remember. I probably got this at Potlatch. But this is just its tail. And then they did beadwork on a moose skin and sewed it in the back and put a little hanger in there and some pretty feathers. So everybody's busy this time of year making things um, to give as gifts. Traditional gifts were um, kakana, which are boots, and gloves. There's martin hat and beaver hat and parkas. So a lot of people are busy um, staying up late, sewing away before um, Christmas. And I talked to my dad today, and he said he wanted to get on KRFF and tell Ann about how they traveled a long time ago. Um, he said he was a little boy, but they <clears throat> people would start in Galena, which is 30 miles above Kaikuk, and they would travel by dog team. And before they got to Kaikuk, um, they would let them know, and then the people in Kaikuk would have all of their dogs ready, and then they would go a whole team of dog sleds and they had a coffee can and they'd put a candle in there and he said it was quite something to have all of those dog teams and with their candles on them and they were all traveling to um, Nulato where the church was for midnight mass and they'd all go down there for midnight mass. Anyway, I wish all of you a Merry Christmas. Christ will plant the Zen we're happy on the day that Christ was born. And be safe. Enjoy your family at this time. Take some time for yourself. Go outside every day and go for a walk. Go on snowshoes, skis, or just do things with your family. Even if you're in quarantine, you can still go outside every day to, um, for your own mental health. Me, I've been doing yoga. I have this group of friends, and we keep each other's... Um, accountable by uh, doing our exercises every day. And we text and message each, mother, each other's all the time. All right. Isi gura. Nadadzukun. All right. Thank you so much, Susan. That was really wonderful. You're welcome. And thanks to all of the viewers who joined us this evening. Thanks again to our sponsor, ANC Accounting, for making tonight's program possible and to our partner organizations, Tanakanaga and Tanana Chiefs Conf Conference. Um, I've put links to many of the resources that Susan talked about today in the public comments under the video, so you can go back to the video later and find those. And if you enjoyed tonight's program and would like to see more of them, you can go to our landing page, morristhompsoncenter.org slash live. You can sign up for the mailing list to get notices about future events. And if you really like tonight's program and would like to support future programs like it, you can do that there too. MorrisThompsonCenter.org slash live. Thank you and good night.